Hello, we're very excited to be speaking at SRE Com 21. Today we'll talk about how we take a principled approach to monitoring our data infrastructure at scale at CrowdStrike. I'm Eric Scow and I'm on today with Praveen Yadidi. We're part of the site reliability engineering team at CrowdStrike. My team is responsible for the health and robustness of our infrastructure, which consists of hundreds of microservices and processes over a trillion events per day. CrowdStrike is a leader in cloud-delivered next-generation services for endpoint protection, threat intelligence, and response. The CrowdStrike Falcon platform stops breaches by preventing and responding to all types of attacks, both malware and malware-free. Using our streaming data infrastructure as an example, we will discuss the attributes of a four-quadrant model that we have relied upon to develop a comprehensive monitoring solution for our complex data processing ecosystem. At CrowdStrike, we process a truly enormous data stream of events, which currently tops more than a trillion events per day on average. And Kafka is at the core of this data processing ecosystem. In creating a comprehensive monitoring strategy for CrowdStrike's data processing pipelines, we found it helpful to consider four main attributes, observability, operability, availability, and quality. As illustrated here, we model these attributes along two axes, complexity of implementation and quality of the engineering experience. This model enables us to classify these attributes into four quadrants. In using the model, we consider the challenges involved in building a comprehensive monitoring system and the iterative approach engineers can take to advance their monitoring strategy. For example, in the lower left, in the lower left quadrant, we start with basic observability, which is relatively easy to address and is helpful in terms of creating a positive developer experience. As we move along the X axis and up the Y axis, we make iterative improvements to, that allow SREs to more easily navigate and troubleshoot our complex data processing ecosystem. Let's start with observability. Here we focus on inferring the operational state of our data streaming infrastructure from the knowledge of external outputs. One of the key metrics to monitor when working with Kafka as a data pipeline or a streaming platform is consumer group lag. Lag is the delta between last committed message to the last produced message. In other words, lag indicates how far behind your application is in processing up-to-date information. Also, Kafka persistence is based on retention, meaning that if your lag persists, you will lose data at some point in time. So the goal here is to keep lag to a minimum. We use Burrow for monitoring Kafka consumer group lag. Burrow is an open source monitoring solution from LinkedIn for Kafka that provides consumer lag checking as a service. It monitors committed offsets for all consumers and calculates the lag and status of these consumers on demand. The metrics are exposed via a HTTP endpoint. As seen here, Burrow exposes both status and lag information in a structured format for a given consumer group across all the partitions of the topic from which it is consumer. However, there is one drawback with the system. This will only present a snapshot of consumer group lag. Having the ability to look back in time and analyze historical trends in this data for a given consumer group is important to us. So we built a system called Kafka Monitor. Kafka Monitor fetches these metrics that are exposed by Burrow and stores them in a time series database. This enabled us to analyze historical trends and even perform velocity calculations like mean recovery time from lag for a given Kafka consumer. In the next few slides, let's explore how we use sharding and auto remediation to improve the availability of our data infrastructure. Like many companies, our organization relied on one very large Kafka cluster to process incoming events. Over time, we expanded that cluster on multiple occasions to manage our truly enormous data stream. However, as our company continues to grow, so does our event volume. And some time ago, we reached the limits, the scaling limits for individual topics on a single Kafka cluster. 
Horizontal scaling of these massive clusters became both problematic and impractical. To address this, we split one large existing cluster into multiple smaller clusters. Even though we refer to the smaller clusters as shards, they are not shards in the, in, in the traditional sense. These are independent Kafka clusters, each with an identical set of topics that we are conceptually sharding when we read and write data. The addition and removal of shards is managed via configuration. Our standard producer and consumer libraries were updated to support one of three shard configurations. Active, meaning the shard is ready for reads and writes. Read only, as the name suggests, the shard is open for only reads. This is an interim state typically used to drain events before setting a shard to the inactive state and inactive. This is useful for maintenance or for quickly dropping activity from a shard while troubleshooting. This sharding strategy afforded our team three main benefits. Infinite scaling. By sharding our cluster, our team can enable nearly infinite horizontal scaling of Kafka production and consumption. Two, ease of maintenance. Now our team can easily complete maintenance tasks with no downtime by shifting the traffic from one shard to the others. And three, fault reliability. We now have quick failover through config update in the event that one shard becomes unavailable for any reason. We talked a bit about availability. Now let's talk about operability. Having a great product doesn't mean that you have to be burned out for operations. For most of the issues, we should have simple and repeatable processes to deal with them. And most of the operations should be automated. At CrowdStrike scale, without operability, things will be totally untenable. I'll tell you a bit about Alert Responder, which is one of the examples of how we approached improving operability. Alert Responder has saved many hours of developer time that would otherwise be spent on frequently repeated manual remediations. Alert Responder at its core is essentially a runbook executor. In cases where we have a well-defined runbook, we can automate its execution using Alert Responder. One runbook that Alert Responder executes frequently is a runbook for Kafka consumer restarts. We have observed that in many cases, alerts triggered due to stalled Kafka consumers or it mitigated by restart of a consumer. So we have codified the restart action into a runbook that can be triggered directly via the monitoring system. This service is also smart enough to escalate the alert in the event that the consumer remains unhealthy, even after a restart and to prevent multiple restarts of the same consumer. Of course, we track the runbook executions and investigate the root cause afterwards. This tool removes the need for real-time intervention and allows us to better plan and prioritize the work. The second useful automation that we derive from our consumer lag monitoring is streaming jobs auto-scaling. We use two auto-scaling strategies. First is scheduled scaling strategy. We use this strategy when uh, we have services where we are able to reliably predict the traffic patterns. With this strategy, we scale the consumer groups to a predetermined capacity to match the data stream load. And second is scaling based on consumer group lag. For services running on our Kubernetes platform, we use Kubernetes-based event-driven auto-scaling. Using the consumer lag metrics that are available in Prometheus, this auto-scaler calculates the number of containers needed for streaming jobs and work with the horizontal pod autoscaler to scale a particular deployment accordingly. The benefit of this is twofold. The architecture is responsive to the throughput, and it also improves the quality of life for our engineers as it requires no manual intervention. By making iterative improvements to drive both availability and operability, we work towards the crown jewel of quality. Next, we'll explore how we've improved efficiency of our pri processing pipelines and enforce SLAs for quality. Let's explore how we've improved the quality of our pipeline by improving the efficiency of processing unevenly distributed partitions in Kafka. When lag is uniform across all partitions on a given Kafka topic, it is typically addressed by adding new instances to the consumer group, aka horizontal scaling. However, when the lag is accumulated in one or a small number of partitions, 
then the backlog also falls on one or a small number of unlucky consumers. In this case, the horizontal, horizontal scaling alone is ineffective because after scaling, the backlog remains concentrated on a few consumers or even just one consumer as shown in the diagram on the right. Unfortunately, there is no out of the box way to address the issue of these lag hotspots within Kafka. In the simplest terms, our solution is to redistribute messages temporarily from a lagging partition to other non-lag partitions. We added a special note in our Kafka consumer library that can be switched on or off so that messages will get redistributed to a different partition within the same topic where they can quickly be picked up and processed normally. We explained our solution through thoroughly in a blog post, which I encourage you to check out. We also track many SLIs to measure the quality of our streaming data infrastructure. As an example, in this diagram, we're tracking end-to-end -end latency through back block, black box analysis and alert based on the SLAs. These four attributes, observability, availability, operability, quality, are each important in their own right for designing, working on, and maintaining our data, our streaming data infrastructure. As we've seen today, these attributes have a symbiotic relationship. The four quadrant model not only exposes this relationship, but also offers an intuitive mental picture that helps us build a comprehensive monitoring solution for streaming data applications that operate at scale. Please do check out our blog to see more details of some of the interesting engineering work that we're doing here at CrowdStrike. And finally, if you're interested in working on hard problems, dealing with data at scale and distributed systems, we're hiring. Please check out our careers page. Thank you very much.